So Tufts University, Tata, yeah. yeah. is doing some work in that arena. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know of any right now that are. You know, I think if, if I can go back to, to your point, one thing I forgot to say earlier is, you know, there was this whole concept of food miles that was talked about. You know, go local, reduce food miles, right? Uh, shipping from, you know, California. And that's all sort of been, you know, debunked to a lot extent, right? Because it was sort of the unit train of apples coming from Walla Walla, relatively efficient, environmentally per units, right? Of distance versus a lot of small trucks driving back and forth on, on rural roads, right? So I think, you know, some of the concept of this food up is, is thinking about those distribution and logistics designs, but that's certainly part of part of the issue that I think is kind of, you know, they've softened their argument on that sense. I'm going to just make an additional comment. There are some interesting models of rural-urban partnerships that are developing um, actually in some of the more central states in the country in which urban farms or urban food procurers are actually connected to rural farms and able to distribute into the city to meet food access, food insecurity issues. So there are models out there. There's primarily case studies, the sort of uh, economic and other impacts maybe haven't been existed. In New York City, we had Corbin Hill, which is the example of a far, uh, food hub, which an individual, uh, a group of individuals had land in upstate New York, but for them to learn how to farm didn't make sense when there was a tremendous bounty of farmers that were very skilled, mid-sized farmers who could actually fill a truck much more efficiently and move it into the community. So. There are examples of those types of uh, hubs that are out there. So. And to add on to Corbin too, I would look at Grow NYC. I think food access is a big portion of their work. So they are they're aggregating product, but they're dealing with a lot of underserved community agencies that may not that may have trouble to access healthy food. They're doing box share programs. Box share programs is a big program or a big movement that's happening too. So I would look at Grow NYC and Foodlink. Interestingly too, in Western New York. Uh, they are the food bank for central New York, but they are really looking at, they have a different perspective on food banking, and I don't want to speak for them, but they buy from a lot of farms, and they're looking at providing not just calories, but healthy <coughs> calories. So they have a lot of food access programs. They are, again, a tremendous purchaser of New York State products, and they're trying to connect that food access piece with the uh, benefits that we have being um, really rich producers of agriculture. So they're connecting those dots really effectively well, and there are, I would argue, a really model example of food banking in New York State. Great. Oh, there's a question here? Yeah. This kind of follows on something what uh, Donna had said. Uh, 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 Sam Lumen Lopardo, who, uh, I like the bank, I'm the director of economic development for the city of Binghamton, and uh, Sam Lumen Lopardo has been tireless in working with the ag issues, but not just ag, but going across party lines and what worked for like, uh, the built environment of Binghamton and improving it. So I can say thank you there. Uh, the question I have at some level is, one of the things we've been working on, kind of, I keep knocking my head against it. Part of it is that I'm not the best grant writer in the world, I don't be the best at up front. But as far as, I don't agree with you. <laughs> but but the, uh, self, being self-aware is never a bad thing. But the, the question that we have, you know, that I have always is, like, what can I do to try to help draw maybe you guys into putting them, there's, there's some properties in Binghamton that really would scream, I look at that match where the food hubs are, where Binghamton is like a set of, you know, the center of a big dead zone, and and, uh, and you know how do we how do we how do we bring that in? There's a lot of there's populations, some population around there, I think, you know, worthwhile the farms within uh, you know transportation link where we have you know three highways, three railroads, uh, you know, along the way to make that all work. I, I guess the question is, like, and it kind of goes back to the whole how do you, how do you help the strategic, how do you help the granular, you know, the granular level that they make the tactical one like level where I mean I have these properties in a highly distressed you know census tract, 75 more than 75% of my, you know, you know, kids getting you know lunches at, at you know at, at the schools. And I, you know, it's hard to get the REDC interested in really doing it. I think I think part of the thing is they keep I think what Don says everyone they, they, they say it but I don't think they understand what the food hub is and what the concepts are. And I frankly I'm not the best ambassador of that I haven't been born in New York City. But the uh, you know, is, is you know what can you know what can I do to make that easier for you to help, or what can I do to you know get other allies, and what would interest you to make that happen, you know, make it work? So I, I'm going to ask Cheryl, but then I'm also going to um, look to the audience a little bit to engage all of you in this conversation. So Cheryl, you first start. 
Sure. Um, so there was a lot of the question, and I appreciate that. Um, I'm a big fan of data, so um, I like writing grants personally. It's like making a case, and if you win it, that's great. Um, but data is really good, and so we faced this in Western New York. The assumption was, go build a food hub. You definitely need one. And for us, it was, let's look at the market and see if we need one, because that map, like I said, there have been food hubs that have completely dropped off of that map, and food hubs that have put a lot of money into building that physical infrastructure. So I would, I, have you done market research? And if you haven't, I would suggest doing some. Um, again, it, particularly for grants, market research is really good to have. Um, it helps defend your case, but it also helps make the case, I think, too. I don't necessarily know. We're going to reach a saturation point with food hubs, and so I'm cautiously optimistic about how many New York State really needs, particularly if they're not cooperating together. It's not, I mean, it's a big state, but it's not that big a state. Um, so I, I do worry that we're going to continue to put these food hubs all over the state, and we're going to see more and more fail. And I don't. I just think that's the way it's going to unwind. So I don't know if anyone else wants to tackle that, but I would suggest doing some market research. Um, again, you know, who are your buyers? Who are your growers? Is there a good marriage between the two of those? Does it make sense to build another one? I don't know. Does it make sense to just support another one in your region that maybe your farmers could sell to? Um, but again, data I think is really, really important. I, I wanted to just also point to the local economy's toolkit. Oh. <laughs> And because hey. it, hey, <laughs> um, but in that, I mean, part of all of this is how do we engage our communities and decide what the priorities are for local food investment. And so a food hub is one solution, but there may be others. And so part of it is embedding that conversation, having the data, using existing data sources to help us understand communities and our assets to make the case. So anything else about that? Yeah, I just wanted to say. Uh, Donald, yeah. uh, yeah, to, to your point, Bob, I think if you want to go down this road, we should convene a couple of stakeholders and not just from the usual suspects. Right, 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 right. Okay, from banking and all the groups that might have a stake in this. And to uh, her point you know, about oversaturation, I don't think we need to worry about that, frankly, in the southern tier. Access to so many highways and transportation uh, lines that we're, it's almost crying out for that. And you've got a group of people who want to do it the worst way. I just don't think they know why or how or, or who needs to be a part of the conversation. That's why we should go pay a visit to some of these people and bring back the stories, but also get data. I, I do think the point that you make of underutilized existing infrastructure is important. I, I, when you said that, I could think about, Lori, you'll have to remind me of, of uh, the food hub we went to. That was in the old IBM building, right? This whole structure yeah. uh, in the Hudson Valley, right? And there's all these businesses that are popping up. And one was, I forget the name, they're targeting uh, New York City, but it was a very interesting case, right? You're driving around these old IBM buildings and piles of rubble stuff like that, and here's this very active, growing hub that's targeting, you know, identifying uh, products in the, um, in the Hudson Valley. So, so thinking about sort of, you know, uh, unused capacity is an compelling, is an compelling uh, argument to your case. Um, but uh, Donna and, and Cheryl are right, and, and I want to give you one example um, from Northern New York. Granted, a lot different than, than Binghamton, uh, but we did an effort uh, on looking, you know, sort of food hub feasibility type of thing, right? Um, and a lot of the players sitting around the table were ready to buy a truck, right? That's the first thing we got to do is buy a truck, which is really scary, actually. Um, but we surveyed buyers, um, and we surveyed producers, and we surveyed consumers, right? And we got some very interesting information. And I do a lot of work in cooperative enterprise, so sort of in the back of my head, thinking, you know, this could be organized in a cooperative sense uh, that producers would want to do this together. I think there's a lot of arguments for that, but I, I won't get on that soapbox. But when we asked them, they said, we asked farmers and said, would you be interested in marketing your products to a food hub, you know, to support expansion and things like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which people carve off a little, you know, slice of premium to support those activities? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, 
Would you like to be involved in the local governance and investment in that type of operation? No way! Absolutely not. Right? Just give me a place to sell it. Right? So there's, you know, and so there's this disconnect. U.S. buyers get the same answer. Right? Oh, I'd love to be able to, you know, talk to a hub to be able to source maybe these unique ingredients like eating valley cakes that they weren't growing and didn't have the knowledge and expertise to do. Right? But they don't want to be involved in, you know, sort of investment or particularly governance, right, of that type of operation. So, you know, there's some disconnects in there. And maybe that's not the case everywhere. It was, you know, in this particular thing. But, you know, you do have a compelling argument in terms of existing capacity that's there. So I just wanted to invite, I didn't know if our colleagues from Jefferson County wanted to make a comment about uh, where they're at in developing the food hub. Uh, because uh, it's, we've seen an example from Western New York that's pretty grounded in a long history of collaboration. And um, we have an expressed interest in, uh, could food hubs actually help us in the summer tier? And in the North Country, they're busy trying to sort of design and execute one. Would you like to just tell us, like, what's going well and what's going challenging? Is it challenging to you in that current frame? I can't hear you. How much time do we have? <laughs> um, I will Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kathy Moore, and I'm the Agile Team Leader at Jefferson County Buffer Extension. Yes, I'm Kathy Moore, and I am the um, Program Leader for Cornell Buffer Extension in Jefferson County. Yeah. I'm Ray Klein. I used to be with Cornell Buffer Extension, but at the moment I've uh, transitioned to a subcontractor to implement the so we don't, I, I must start off saying we are not in a place where we have a full-fledged food hub yet. We are actually doing a number of um, pilot sets, kind of like many.